speaking, I'd like to welcome everybody to our town hall meeting tonight. I'm going to be a little informal and just kind of walk around the uh, audience with the microphone. And tonight is really about uh, listening to the community and getting your uh, feedback on an issue. I get phone calls and emails from time to time about uh, plastic bag bans. And Tacoma is an enacted one, Bainbridge Island has, and the count Kitsap County is having some discussions about it. And I felt it was important for us to talk about it here in Port Orchard. So we've got the Port Orchard City Council here, and we've got uh, County Commissioner Charlotte Garrido also uh, here at, uh, at the dais. So Thank you. Uh, Chris Piercy? from uh, Kitsap County's Solid Waste Division is here, and I'm gonna hand him the microphone first. You can do it from there, you can walk up here, whatever you're comfortable doing, and uh, he's gonna give us some information about uh, the impacts of the solid waste stream. Thank you. Um, so as uh, Mayor Patansu mentioned, my name is Chris Piercy. I work for the Solid Waste Division in the Kitsap County Public Works Department, and um, a few months back, the commissioner's office asked us to take on uh, exploring the possibility of a bag ban in Kitsap County. And um, last month we briefed the commissioners on possible um, approaches to um, taking on this issue. Um, right now we're still kind of in an exploratory phase of, of uh, talking to stakeholders. Stakeholders include uh, the city of Port Orchard along with the other cities in the county. So um, at this point we are kind of in a place where hearing what folks like you have to say is um, great input as we start to talk about a county ordinance. And um, at this point in time, we're sort of just looking at the standard model that other cities and counties have taken on with a few changes uh, from lessons learned from other places. So um, at this point in time in Washington state, there's over 15 cities that have adopted similar ordinances, mostly high population cities. Uh, cities like Seattle, but there's also um, some rural communities like the city of Friday Harbor, the uh, city of Ellensburg, um, San Juan County is also one that's adopted these ordinances. So um, they're becoming more commonplace throughout the state, country, and uh, even the world. There's several countries in just about every continent, minus Antarctica, that have adopted similar ordinances so um, or similar laws, even at the national scale. So it's definitely a conversation that's happening, not just here, but globally. So um, there's a lot of data available out there. I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of you might have for me personally. Um, there's also uh, my boss is in the back of the room here, Pat Campbell. She's the manager of our solid waste division. Um, and of course, Commissioner Greedo, who has already gotten my briefing, briefing as well. So um, we're all pretty well versed on this issue and um, happy to hear what y'all have to say and answer any questions you might have. So with that, uh, does anybody have anything they want to share or have questions for Chris? Or The city really hasn't taken a position on this at all. We haven't started drafting any type of ordinance. I just heard that the county was considering it, and I felt it would be important to talk about it as a community. So, Yes, ma'am. So if you could just identify yourself. and uh... Hi, my name is Jamie Williams, and I'm sorry I already forgot your first name. Um, but I have a question for you, Chris. Um, I would just like to know, do you have any data on uh, the impact of like Pierce County and the city of Seattle, who's already adopted this uh, plastic bag, bag ban, or whatever? Um, how does how has it affected uh, their communities? I, is it making a difference yet? Um, fiscally, is it has it come, com, you know, if it bothered them or whatever? You know, I can't talk. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I mean, is there a difference? Uh, in the waste management part, is it paying for itself yet, or? So um, on the global community scale, I'd actually um, refer to Heather Trim here. She's from Zero Waste Washington. They've been working with a lot of communities throughout the state on these issues. So um, I'll go ahead and, and hand it off to her. OK. Do you mind if I say a little bit more and then answer your question? Would that be OK? Get to, OK, great. Um, so I kind of feel like I should move over here. Um, so my name is Heather Trim. I'm trying to get over here so I can talk to you guys and the audience. Um, and I'm with Zero Waste Washington, and we are thrilled that you are considering doing a bag ordinance um, here. The most recent bag ordinance was actually Port Angeles a couple of months ago, so another small town. And one of the main arguments that some of the council members made there was because they're a tourism town, they were very concerned about the litter along the side of the highways when all the folks were coming for 
viewing the national parks and the natural beauty of our area that we live in, which was interesting, because that was the first time that we'd actually had those kind of arguments in on this. Um, so um, we are right now working with 16 different communities, uh, cities and counties in Washington that are interested in doing bag ordinances. So it's, there's sort of a tidal wave going on about bags. And the, you know about some of the impacts in terms of wildlife and microplastics and impacts on um, you know, our shellfish and things like that. But for me, right now, the number one argument is actually about um, the impacts on our recycling facilities. So um, the problem is, is if you put your plastic bags in the blue bin and the blue bin goes to the truck and then goes to your recycling facility, um, they have, it's a nightmare for them to deal with the plastic bags. Um, the problem is, is that the plastic bags um, catch on their rollers in their system and literally clog up their equipment so that they have to stop the entire line every shift at least once for at least 20 minutes and have all of their employees go and pull the bags out of the equipment. And it's dangerous. And it's because they have to get into equipment that's not really designed for that kind of thing. And so it's costing us as taxpayers and cities money in terms of this, but it's also just a terrible thing to have to close down your facility um, twice a day. I was at a tour of one of these facilities about a month ago, and someone said, what are the top three re things that are the biggest problems for you at your facility? They asked the owner, and he said, plastic bags, plastic bags, plastic bags. So it really brings home this issue about how bags are such a problem um, for just the operations. And, and really, there, there are cities that are considering not allowing the bags to be in the blue bin at all because they're such a problem. Um, in answer to your question about the impacts, so it's kind of new and they have, there hasn't been a whole ton of studies, but the study that I know about locally is in Thurston County. They looked at um, the amount of bags that they were seeing littering the area before and after, and they also looked at the amount of bags coming through their system, and they did see a big drop after they, they did the Thurston County. So they've actually got a commission study where they looked at that. So that's the answer. In terms of costs, the cost to the city is not that high. The costs, the, the benefits are big in terms of the, the, the reduce, reducing the impacts at the recycling centers. Um, but, but in terms of implementing, it's not usually a lot of, of cost to staff because they're, it, they're not heavily enforced. It's kind of happened slowly over time. It's not a big, ooh, we're gonna come in with a big hammer kind of um, thing. And in fact, as, an, as a group that's promoting these, we don't really want there to be a whole lot of hardcore enforcement. We want it to be just like the other types of things in recycling where it just sort of happens over time and people you know, gradually kind of get too comfortable with it. So it's not like this big thing that happens. Um, anyway, that was a long-winded answer to your question, but um, if you have any other questions, please let me know. <laughs>
Yes, so that's exactly right. The idea and the hope is that people will bring their own bags um, and that those that that would be, therefore, you would not, you have the cost of getting a bag initially, but not after that. The um, ordinances that have passed um, across the state all have, um, almost all have an exemption um, that we strongly support, which is that, f that people on food assistant programs are exempt, um, that fast food is exempt, and um, newspaper bags and produce bags are exempt. Um, so so that, that would help reduce um, some of that burden. But um, What about those mutt mitts? The mutt mitts. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I got to have one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, right, right, exactly. Um, but yes, there would be, uh, the, idea, the idea is that if you don't have the five cent um, cost, then you aren't um, providing an uh, incentive for people to bring their own bags. So that is obviously the most controversial part of the ordinance is that you're So most cities, if you bring your own bag, then you don't get charged the nickel or 10 Correct. cents or whatever it is. But if you force the store to give you a bag, then they're passing that cost onto the consumer. Is that... What I'm that, that, and that, that the store keeps the five cents. But um, usually it's only the grocery size bag, the big bag. Um, mm -hmm. And so some stores do have at their checkout the smaller um, paper bags that are the one size down mm -hmm. from the standard grocery bag that they'll um, give for people who'd like those for no charge. And I've seen that happen at quite a few stores. Rob? Yes, ma'am. Are we, I think I want to get my head around exactly what bags we're talking about. Are we just talking about the bags that you get from Walmart or Safeway? Or are we talking about the plastic bags um, that I put in my garbage can at home and fill it up? And I, then I don't think it? so. I think we're talking about a retail store. Your, your Walmart, your, I see a Target, Target. bag here. Um, Lowe's, you know, they're, they're, everybody's using these. Uh, I, I saw a statistic that on the lifespan of a um, of one of these plastic bags, and it's about 12 minutes. Yeah, uh, is that correct? Yeah, that's kind of the the common statistic that comes out. Um, and that's a very timely question, actually, because I was just pulling up all the exemptions in the model ordinance right now. Um, so anything over 2.25 mils thick, which is a lot of your high-end boutique bags, and um, I think you know some of the Macy's and department store type bags meet that requirement are exempt. But uh, the following categories are also exempt under the current uh, proposed model, and that's um, bags for small greeting cards, uh, bulk goods, uh, vegetables, small hardware uh, like uh, nuts and bolts, um, frozen food containment, so your ice cream bags, uh, meat and fish, um, the flower wraps and potted plants, um, anything that might be damp that could cause uh, a health hazard, um, prepared foods, bakery goods, prescription drugs, takeout, um, prepared liquids, so anything, you know, you get at a, like a soup, you go, to, you go to your favorite soup place, uh, you need to bring that home. Um, Newspaper bags, door hanger bags, tire bags, dry cleaning bags, and bags sold in packages. So pet waste, garbage, and storage bags are all exempt. Does that answer the question? It does. Yeah. Perfect. I got a hand over here. Good um, I'd like to ask a question of everybody in general. Has anybody in this room ever reused their plastic bag for any other purpose? Has anybody ever taken that plastic bag and lined their, their uh, garbage, like the bathroom trash? Has anybody ever used one for scooping up their cat litter and disposing of the cat litter? And dog, dog waste as well. So would it be fair to say that everybody in this room has repurposed those bags? Is there anybody in this room who has not reused those bags for any other purpose? Sir, what's your name? Randy Williams. Thank you. Um, the point I'm getting at is that uh, I do this. I, I go shopping. I come home, empty out all the bags, roll them up into a little tiny knot, and stuff them into another plastic bag. And then I'm drawing out of that bag of plastic bags throughout the course of weeks to use it for a variety of other things. Now, if you ban plastic bags, then I'll have to find another way of doing this, which would be to buy more plastic bags or do, 
do without plastic bags, which I'm probably not going to do for a variety of things that I use plastic bags for because of the sanitation issue. You know, you put yucky things in there. You don't want to use paper bags for that. Okay. So the point I'm trying to get at is that um, you're kind of driving the public into going out and buying more plastic bags to replace the plastic bags that they can't bring home when they go shopping. And, you know, maybe that's a good thing. I, I, don't, I don't see it as a good thing myself because I don't want to have to go out and buy more plastic to replace the plastic that I get for free now, which sounds kind of cheap, but that's the way I am. But um, the point I'm trying to get at is that these bags, we never throw away a plastic bag until it's just, there's nothing left at all. Typically, the only time we throw that plastic bag away is when it's full of waste. And if we were throwing that bag full of waste away, we would be throwing a bag full of waste away that we went out and purchased at a department store. And the other point I wanted to make is that, like this lady was talking about, stores, uh, box stores are seeing a big hit from internet shopping. And the more inconvenient shopping becomes, the easier it is for people to just, you know, pick up, open up their computer and buy something online and say to heck with going to the store. So you're kind of defeating the purpose there too. And that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. That's a great comment. I, I know at least in my household, I think we, we reuse ours quite a bit. But I get way more than I think I could ever use in a couple of lifetimes. But yes, sir. You got to identify yourself first. Uh, Shutter Cavanaugh. And I got two partners, that's okay. Uh, one to Randy. Uh, was Randy, right? Yeah. Uh, on the reuse thing, the bag ban, it's not the fact that you're reusing it, it's the fact that it's going into the dump. It's going into a place where they don't decompose and they just they sit there and they just you know contaminate the world forever. So good on you for reusing it because I reuse mine too and everything like that. And we got to pull off the band-aid and stop using them. You know, hey, I got a plastic uh, dump it or a plastic uh, bin at home for my trash. Yeah, if I throw something yucky in there, I'm gonna have to hose it out with water outside. You know, sucks, but I'll have to adapt. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing is, I'm getting it out of the dump. Okay, so that's the whole thing about getting rid of bags. And then back to you, uh, was it Kathy? Yeah. Heather, I'm sorry. Um, you kind of freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> Um, this is, we're talking about a plastic bag ban. You're talking about a bag ban. So there's completely different things here. Um, you want us to reuse these, which is great, but I'm talking about banning plastic bags. You're talking about a charge on the paper bags in the store to promote the use of these on top of the bag ban. These are two totally separate things, okay? <coughs> ban the plastic bags, yes. Charge for the paper bags, no. Um, if people want to bring these, great. I'm totally for that. But paper is a reusable resource. Um, I come from Idaho originally. Uh, it is a renewable resource, okay? So paper does not destroy the landfills. It is something that is reusable. It's something that should be pushed back to the consumer because they're paying for it. Not the consumer, but to the uh, whatever they call those people, Albertsons. <laughs> um, because they're already paying for the plastic bags. The plastic's way cheaper than paper. So there will be an upsell there, and I'm sure they'll put it back in their prices someplace we won't get as many sales. But Paper should still be available, and we shouldn't have to pay for it. Um, and that's just my two cents on the whole thing. <laughs> but they two should be considered two separate issues. So what I'm hearing is that you are for a, a ban bag, but you don't believe that the ordinance should have the requirement, as some communities have done, for a, a bag surcharge. Is what, yeah. OK. Thank you, Your Eminence. Uh, my name is Kathy Lund. I'm a resident of Port Orchard. Um, just two quick things. Number one, I had no idea about the bags gumming up the whole system works, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's something that we should make more known. Because you're saying that if we don't put the bags in the trash and that they don't gum up, the, that'll save the city money. And I'm a little skeptical because I don't anticipate my garbage bill going down or my taxes or anything like that. But good on you, hopefully. Um, as far as these reusable shopping bags, they're really great, but um, there was a USA Today poll. Only 3% of the people who reported anonym anonymously say they wash them. And then there was a study done by this company in Canada, and these reusable shopping bags, when you put your groceries in them, have 300% more mold and bacterias than the other bags. So just something there, too. Thank you. 
So we've got solid waste here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe our the cost of our recycling is built into our rates. And it is that, yeah. So if, the, if yes. our cost to per, to recover the recycling, or and it also is affected by uh, the ability for them to if, if you know they get depending on what they get for the end product is. Uh, it changes the, the cost on the recycling side of it. Could, could you explain that better than I have? Okay, so the cost of recycling for curbside customers, uh, it actually depends where you are. And City of Port Orchard is uh, part of the same system that the county is where you get a separate, you know, on your bill it's itemized for garbage and recycling. So there are separate costs involved, but it is all part of your standard garbage service. So yes, that recycling portion of it will change with time and in fact you may have all seen something from waste management recently about a 76 cent surcharge that has a lot to do with recyclable markets and right now uh, because China has really clamped down on the acceptable level of contamination that they're getting on particularly plastics and mixed waste paper the processing facilities have to work a lot more slowly in order to be able to achieve that level of contamination. So that is driving the prices up. So what Heather was saying, also one of the factors is how many times you have to shut down the facility. So it is reflected eventually in your recycling, the recycling portion of your garbage bill. So yes, it, it really would be good. Um, here in, Lewis, in Kitsap County, we tell people don't put your uh, plastic bags in the recycling, but that doesn't, the message doesn't always resonate. So, so Chris Henry's here. She's going to... No, I'm just, I'm going to identify yourself. Oh. I'm Pat Campbell. I'm with, so we, yeah, with Kitsap County Public Works. Also so, so Chris Henry is going to get that on the front page of the paper tomorrow. <laughs> Don't put that on... <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, that's right. Yeah, we're not going to make the deadline. All right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm Lynn Cavanaugh, and a former teacher. And I think with anything, it's all about how we teach people. Um, I would love to see straws banned, plastic cups, the paper bags uh, that are the one-time use. Um, and I think we really need to start having something in our schools with our children to teach them because they're the future and we old folks you know we're set in our ways we don't like change but if we start with the young ones they can help us learn and I think it would be wise to educate our teachers to start maybe a program in their classrooms to say okay this is how we can do our little bit to help. So your education, and, and we had a, was it John Sedgwick, the gentleman? He's come yes. and talked to us at our John city council Sedgwick. meeting of the things he's, he's doing at, uh, I believe at John Sedgwick, so. And we have a full education staff that does do school outreach uh, along with our adult programs as well. So um, we are doing everything from worm composting to uh, transfer station tours to recycling education. Outstanding. I think it's also good to have the recycling capability for the students. So my grandchildren, they had, you know, different holes for this and this and that. So it is happening in the schools. So what's her name? Others, I, I know Jerry, I'll come back to you, Jerry. I want to give everybody else in the audience, anybody else that I have? Yes. I'm Erin Sullivan. And uh, just a question, how long does it take to, I guess, for the general bag, plastic bag ban for the plastic to disintegrate and actually go back in. I've heard estimates all over the map, but uh, Heather looks like she has a good answer here. So the problem with the plastic is that it is designed to be durable and last a really long time. And so we're talking over 500 years for plastic to actually go away. Unfortunately, what happens is when it gets out into the water, you may have heard this, it just breaks down when the sun hits it, it break and the water turning it around, it breaks into smaller and smaller and smaller bits. And that becomes the microplastics, which then our fish are eating and then birds are eating. And, and then we don't know what the, the health impacts are of that. But 
not a good thing. Um, so that's the problem is the plastic is um, sort of this wonderful product in the sense that it's durable, but that's the problem at the back end in terms of the environmental impact. So it's, yeah, good point. Others? Chris? Um, Chris Henry, Kids Have Sun. Can you speak to the environmental impact of um, making paper bags? Because I know they break down, but I've heard, you know, that there is an environmental impact. You know, I, you are right. There are impacts of any kind of product that you're making. And one of the issues with paper bags is, yes, it is a renewable resource and that type of thing. But because they are heavier, the transportation costs are higher and the environmental impact of the trucking or however those paper bags are getting from the manufacturer to the final destination is also factored in. So I don't have hard figures on the environmental impacts, but I think that, again, is part of the reason why many of the ordinances have the uh, incentive to encourage reusable bags, because there are impacts on the environment as well from paper bags, even though they are renewable, even though supposedly they will biodegrade, but that really depends on where they are, whether they're going to degrade. So I think, again, you know, reuse is the main goal in solid waste hierarchy. You know, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So um, reusing bags is probably the best thing. And I, and I also have understand the studies that, you know, talk about the germs that might form in them and that kind of thing. But I think part of the reason that things like the meat bags aren't banned is so that if you have some hamburger that has blood in it, you put it in a plastic bag before you put it in your reusable bag. So there are things to um, eliminate some of the hazards of the reusable bags as well. Other questions? Uh, I'll come back to you too. After, I want to give everybody else. Sir? Uh, my name is Donald Rude. Uh, I don't know the write-up I did, but I, I'm hearing some of these things already. There's so many confusing things. Like you go to Costco, get 30 rolls of toilet paper. There's five packages. They're in plastic bags. The big bag holding all of them is together. People apparently don't have enough brains to think that, hey, all the plastic stuff going in my garbage should go in a separate bag. I do that, I put it down to recycle and put it right on top. So obviously the truck driver can grab it and throw it wherever he throws the plastic bags. But I did come up with a little thing here and some of it's hearsay or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I'd like to retain the use of the plastic bags. We need biodegradable plastic bags, obviously. But can you imagine cleaning up your dog's waste in a park with a paper bag? Or how about wet items of produce in the grocery stores? No one wants to take it home in a paper bag. Many of the store clerks are already upset with the use of personal carryout bags. As some folks bring in filthy personal bags, the clerks do not want to touch or even have on their counters. Uh, as an aside, I've been in 62 countries at least twice each or more before I retired. I retired 20 years ago. I've seen the real pollution of the world, barbed wire fences around airports covered with plastic bags to the point you cannot even see the wire. That's unbelievable. Air so bad that some of our <clears throat> company's on-site reps had to return back to Seattle, the University of Washington Hospital because they had so many problems with their breathing. 20 years ago, I would come home from business trips and tell my friends, our country will be the most pristine, most clean, most beautiful, and most bankrupt country in the world at the rate we were going. This is 20 years ago I saw this. And also, someone asked real ties, and I'm surprised at this meeting, but a lot of the public meetings, the general working public can't attend. And you always get generally the minorities. This is a real exception tonight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for your comments. Others that haven't commented yet, and then I'll go back over here. Sheila? Calling you out. <laughs> it's all right. 
Um, so I'm all for the ban. I, I know you, but could you identify oh, yourself? <laughs> I'm Sheila Klein. Um, I live here in Port Orchard. Um, I'm all for the bag ban. I have a wide variety of the reusable bags. I also have cloth uh, drawstring bags that I use for bulk items and my produce. Um, I, I think plastic as a whole definitely needs to go away. I even have my bamboo utensils I carry so that I don't have to use plastic utensils when I'm out and about. And I would have bought one for each one of you if I could have, but they are, I mean, they're a little pricier. I think I paid $15 for this. And inside is my handy-dandy reusable straw. Um, I, when I go to the local restaurants, they all know they do not give me a straw because I have my own. Um, I think we should do a straw ban as well. Again, that's just my opinion. Um, I think the main focus should be reducing plastic whether it's um, if you do reuse your bags. Um, they do make compostable doggy bags, though. Um, those are out there. Um, they make compostable trash bags as well. Um, I know for some of you, someone else mentioned that you know they don't like throwing their trash into just the trash can without a bag. Um, I do that, though. Um, and if it gets gross, I just take it out and wash it out. And I just dump all of my trash into one bag. So I think, back to what you said, um, it's all about changing our habits. I'm not, you know, I'm of that older crowd as well. <laughs> and so um, I have started doing this only because my daughter um, is studying sustainability and brought some things to my attention. And I think, I think we need to listen to the younger crowd and, and use less. Maybe, you know, if that's for you, just buying and using one bag. Um, I do try to wipe mine out. You know, they make disinfectant for that, or if they're washable, wash them. So that's, that's my two cents worth. Okay. Thanks for your comments. I um, was hoping I hear could someone you, say something. Could you oh, identify sorry. yourself? Oh, Gail Porter. Um, I came late, but I was wondering if anyone had mentioned, uh, you know, with... Um, Aluminum cans, they came up with a extra so many cents per, and I was wondering if that had been studied or anything for bags, uh, you know, just to, because I've heard some reasons, there are like reasons you want to use plastic, you know, so, some of the stuff is like, yeah, it's kind of disgusting <laughs> if you don't put plastic around it, um, so I was just wondering if, if anything like that had been looked into or anything so i assume you're referring to like the crv the cash redemption value you see on some cans and bottles um no there hasn't been any deposit system that i'm aware of passed anywhere for plastic bags but um you know that that's even been a challenge in washington just to get that for beverages uh you know washington is, is one of those states that still doesn't have a crv um i think we're one of the few on the west, the only one on the west coast now. But um, yeah, I'm not familiar with any bag CRVs yet. Thank you. All right. Anybody else out there that hasn't spoke that would would like to? Okay, Jerry, you want, want the microphone again? Yeah. Well, I have so many thoughts running through my head, but the number one is just in the past two weeks, they've had that they make bags that are totally. Uh, biodegradable and I think that I showed it to you and I think it was the yucca plant that um, so they are out there but here again it's getting the corporations to make it I mean I go to Costco and I just am amazed at the um, fruit that is in individually each one is encased in a plastic container that might be this big but they're wrapping around the fruit and we bring it home and we can't even put it in our recycle because it's not one of the things that <clears throat> it's not recyclable. So one is to get corporations to stop using so much. And then also in England, they're doing um, research on instead of using blacktop for roads, they're actually grinding up somehow. I don't know how it's done, 
but it looks really interesting. They say it lasts longer and doesn't. So what are some uses for these instead of having them just go into the dumps and things for that? And also rules, like I have a new neighbor, and she said that in Everett, she just went from Everett, and I hadn't heard it in our garbage, that you have to double bag your kitty litter waste and your, are we supposed to do it here? Okay, see, I was ignorant. I put it in the one bag and then put it in my garbage, but I hadn't heard double bagging it. So there are rules that we're supposed to live by that are using the last. Yes, so to answer the, the last question, yes, double bagging is something we recommend in Kitsap County, but um, regarding your question about end markets for the, uh, the, ma the material that is collected, the the store drop-off sites throughout Kitsap County and the country are collecting about uh, half a percent of the bags produced right now. Um, that's the estimated recycling rate of those coming in, and those are generally going toward um, the uh, composite lumber industry, is my understanding. So that hmm. currently, so if you estimate, we estimate that about 85 million uh, plastic bags are being produced in Kitsap County right now. If you do the math, that's Right. How and what time for 85 million annually? per year? Per year, sorry, per annually. Uh, yeah. So, uh, a few hundred thousand are coming into the recycling system in Kitsap County, and most of that is going to um, to lumber. Hmm. Others wanting a second bite at the apple here? One other question, uh, you know, to get people to sort of give back their bags is. Um, the idea of it seems like people are into getting something. If you bring something in, there's all kinds of games and stuff. So what if you brought X number of bags in, you get a coupon or something, you know, that stores were, um, or, or you get, or it's worth something towards a certain item. You know how they give out coupons for stuff and maybe, you know, 100 bags worth whatever but that kind of thing has anyone ever looked into anything like that because that would just be seems like easier to implement maybe I don't know not to my knowledge I haven't actually heard it done anywhere but I think the logistics of that would be really difficult like who's you know it's one thing on the the cans and bottles and things like quite often there's a, a mechanized way of counting those in, in places that do have deposit on uh, beverage containers. I, I, I can try and envision the Safeway clerk that's counting out the individual bags. I, I just don't know logistically how, how it would work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, and I think that would be that would be a way to increase the recycling of them. Mm -hmm. But even even the recycling of them, at some point, there's going to be limited markets for them as well. Yeah, as Chris said, mainly they're for composite lumber. So until people start buying a lot more composite lumber, there may be a, a, a point at which even the recycling markets for those materials would dry up. Just to add to that, um, I used to work at uh, Honolulu um, Down to Earth, which is an all-natural grocery store, and we did that. We um, counted bags, and it was 10 cents each if you brought, and that was the incentive. You would get a plus 10 cents for every bag you brought in, and it worked for us. It was a small thing, but I think it's consumer-driven, so if we, the consumers, speak up, say, you know what, we're not going to shop here because that store gives me a benefit, the stores are going to follow. The stores are going to listen, and then hopefully, as it becomes more normal, those corporations are going to start changing their ways. So, yeah. Interesting perspective. Thanks. Others wanting counsel? You got oh, this gentleman here, and then yeah, mine. Hopefully, will be quick. It's for Heather again. Hi. <laughs> uh, back on that uh, tax or what, that charge for the paper bags. Can we turn it into a tax? Or is there, I know there's a cost to the store, but say they charge three cents a pair, the cost to them is like three cents a bag, kick on an extra three cents tax and give it back to the community? Um, I guess that's, that's possible, but um, part I'm of down for tax for luxury items. I mean, marijuana, no, no, trust me, marijuana has got us over, what, 1.5 billion already? I mean, that's what their sales, and we've got a return of 500 million in the last year. I mean, come on, that's amazing. Alcohol tax, great. Gas tax, great. 
So, I mean, luxury items, any kind of taxes you can put on luxury items, paper bags, luxury item. So, I mean, I'm down for that. And if they were paying six cents anyways, we might as well get half of it back. So, so. Um, the stores would not be very happy with that. This, it costs the stores, it costs the stores, I know, but it costs the stores um, more for paper bags than plastic bags. And so part of the, um, the, the, five, the, the fact five cent fee going to the stores helps offset their costs, and that's pretty important to them. And um, we've heard that across the state from a lot of the, if there were any store owners here, mm -hmm. they would be definitely speaking to that. So definitely there are some stores. Um, there's a store, a grocery store, that also will do an incentive, um, 10 cent incentive, and they donate it to charity, um, the 10 cents if people bring in their own bags. So there are some stores where that's part of their um, ethos of the store to, to be sustainable, and that's, that's the reason they're, doing, they're, they're, they're giving the incentive. But um, the other stores would be pretty unhappy if, if they, we need a level playing field. And there's some stores that are, there's some stores that, um, that for, for whom this would not be a burden, but there are other stores for whom it really would be a burden to not be able to let them have the five cents. Okay, you can hang on to that. Chris. <coughs> I'm wondering if you could elaborate on, you know, the enforcement piece. You said it's not heavy handed. I'm trying to picture how this works with the stores. Do they, and some, you know, bags are allowed for some uses. How does this all logistically come together in places where the ordinance is in effect? So um, in the places like Seattle and Tacoma where the ordinances have been in, well, Se Seattle and Bellingham was, and Edmonds was actually the first ordinance. Um, the, uh, there's usually a little bit of a delay before it goes into effect so that people can use up their existing um, stores of bags. And um, then it's, uh, there's signs that are posted at the cash register. The cities usually do a lot of public um, PR to let the public know about the ordinances. And um, then it just happens slowly over time. The cities, I'm not aware of any enforcement where they've done any fines at all. It's, it's, it's uh, usually if someone complains, the city will go and say, hey, do you know this ordinance is in place? Um, you know, they might send a letter, but I am not aware of any place where there's been any enforcement at all. Right, and I, I guess the question is sort of, you're going to have plastic bags for some uses. Right. So are they, where are they available in the stores? What oh, the stores I see what you're saying. Like? Yeah. So the t-shirt bags, the bag um, that was shown up on the dais, that bag is the unique bag that is um, banned. So it's it's the t-shirt carry home bag. And so that's very clear if they're, if they're handing those out or they're not handing those out. All the rest of the bags in the store um, are not really an issue. So like the produce oh, bags, bags, produce bags, the little frozen um, bags, the uh, little bags for candies, all the other, all the different types of bags. So really because they're a unique bag, um, they're very visible in terms of, Right, right. Um, I reached out to the Chamber of Commerce and they reached individually out to the stores and invited them this evening. Um, I don't see any retailers here this evening, um, but they were invited tonight. Yeah. As well as, and, and uh, Mr. Clausen? I, I just, when I went to the grocery store the last time, I asked the clerk, now by no means are they the authority, but I was mainly interested from their perspective. Did they see this as a challenge for them? And she was really indifferent on it. So um, I don't know if she's ever worked somewhere that they didn't have the plastic bags or not. So you take it for what it's worth. She didn't think it was gonna be a big deal. And my goal here is to wrap this up probably here by 7.30 and I'd like to actually hear from some of the folks up at the dais. Um, uh, Councilmember Chang, I saw you raised your hand and then I'd like to get Commissioner Garrido a chance to speak if she'd like to. So, Fred? I was going to echo what John said. I spoke to two people. One was a pet store, and she said, just let me know. Gig Harbor did it. Tacoma did it. I, we just need to know. But I also spoke to a clerk at St. Vinny's where they reuse bags that people bring in because they apparently don't buy their own. And this clerk thought that it would be a hardship for them. Um, I had a question for Heather about uh, the fourth exemption. It was like food. W was something about low-income exemption or? And how yeah, all, all charity organizations are exempt. And, and I know that I've also heard uh, concerns from food banks as well, and those are exempt as well. Okay. Commissioner Grito, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, 
Well, at first, I'd, I'd like to thank you for inviting me here, and, and I didn't expect to sit up here, so um, I could have heard from the floor. It's been really, really um, informative, great questions, and really good answers. I'm very proud of, of um, our staff, um, Chris and, and Pat, being here and being able to answer so many questions. It did, for me, raise a couple of questions, though, about some of the data that we might be um, acquiring. If we know that um, plastic bags are gumming up equipment, it would be nice to, it would be helpful to know um, what the cost of uh, the time that they're out of commission, the, the cost of, of repairing them, and how frequent something like that happens. Because I think that that might be um, an instructive um, amount um, of co a big cost that we should be um, uh, considering. I also think that we should distribute that list of exempt bags. Uh, I think that people really would like to know that, and, and I didn't know there was such a, that there were so many different kinds of exempt bags. So I think that that would be valuable knowledge. Um, and then um, the kind of education. I love the idea of having kids help us learn because I know they will, and they're very open about um, what they learn and, and passing that information on. But um, I like Sheila's methods of uh, using her her personal utensils. And I think that that's a story that needs to be told, too. It's really not that hard. I, too, really, really am reluctant to use a lot of plastic utensils all the time because I know that they're going to be used once and thrown away. And that's, um, that's wasteful on a lot of levels. So that's it for now. The one. Well, no, I just, I'm wondering with all the exemptions there are, because it seems like there were many, how effective is it just to remove the bags that they put <coughs> our groceries in? It sounds you know, like a, And not um, everything else. It seems like, you know, is that 50%? Is that, you know, 35%? Is that 75%? I mean, or is it, is it a small percentage and it's just a start? It yeah, sounds like it's a, I, I don't know the percentage, but it's a it's at least a, it's a million bags. So was that yeah, it, it, eight, it's eight, huge. Eight. I mean, considering you you buy um, just about anything at a grocery store, you leave with a t-shirt bag anymore. Um, it takes a certain specific type of material to actually leave with the exempted bags. Uh, you go to Fred Meyer, you buy a pair of shorts you leave with a bag. Uh, if you buy a can of mixed nuts, you leave with a bag. If you leave with, you know, a pair of shoes, you end up with a bag. So, um, but the only way you're going to end up with a produce bag is if you buy 10 years of corn and, and haul them out. So it's definitely a, a small portion of the total inventory of all these stores. So um, I can't give you an exact figure, but um, just from my own anecdotal observation and my own bag collection, um, I can tell you that, that my, the T-shirt bags are far and away the greater contributor. And I've been trying, when I've got a, just an item or two, I ask them not to give me a bag. And I, mm -hmm. most stores will let you walk out with well, your, re, your receipt and your item. That was my other question, because at Costco, although some of the items you buy from Costco have a generous amount of plastic with them, they don't bag those for you. Mm -hmm. So when you leave Costco, you show your receipt to somebody at the door, and they they check it off. Is that something that the other, um, you know, that our grocery store outlets would begin doing? Most of the things I buy at Costco won't fit in a bag, though, either, because there's <laughs> so, many, so many of them. But <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like Sin to follow up on that, too. Um, I, I actually... Uh, often ask not to have a bag. I actually carry a couple of yeah. cloth bags all the time, and I do wash them regularly. Um, but if I'm only going in for a few items, I, I ask not to have a bag. Councilmember Member Luke I, I hear a number of different issues. So back in the, back, um, the corner, when we're dealing with the plastic bags getting gummed up in the equipment, that's a whole separate issue totally separate issue than everything else that we're talking about here. I see that as an education problem. I see that as the public needs to be made more aware. You know, we have so many levels of dealing with plastics that I don't even quite know where to start either except personal awareness. I know in our household, I mean, I get a lot of these. I just took back two full bags today to Target 
you know, to put them in there, recycle. Um, and I know in our household, we have really made an effort to just recycle just everything we can. Um, so I think that the educational efforts are paying off, but I am not sure that this single-use plastic bag ban does the trick. Um, and I'm not sure that charging and putting more burden on the retailers is a good thing. Um, like you said, um, that you've got, we already have a lot of people switching their habits from buying um, at the retail stores to online. And we benefit as a city from the sales of these local retailers. So I think this needs more study and lots more education um, <coughs> for people to, to really dive in and, and do more of their own recycling. Um, I don't know where to start exactly. But, you know, I, when I'm listening to you all here tonight, I'm going, if you want to deal with the uh, gumming up the equipment issue, let's start with that and um, awareness, a huge awareness campaign of some sort. Okay. Others? Mr. Dean? So you had mentioned that the chamber had reached out to businesses, mm -hmm. but are they planning on taking a position or looking into this anymore? Probably not. No. Okay. They were just, I, would I just asked them to reach out to local businesses and invite them and, and, and I was told mul Matt did multiple times. Okay, and I, then I, I, I would just offer that our local, <coughs> our major local stores are not decision makers. That would come from their corporate office. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So yeah. the local folks probably have no influence on it. Yeah. And well, then I, I also th I agree with Cindy that there are really two issues here. One is what's affecting operations of the county, which is an educational issue, and m maybe that's as simple as stickers on our garbage cans, um, but there's also a sustainability issue. And, and to that end, I'd like to learn more, mm -hmm. and certainly one way to do that is to take a look at some of the adopting ordinances of these other jurisdictions, because I'm fairly sure that in the recitals of those ordinances, we can find lots of discussion about the pros and cons of uh, plastic bags. Others? I Mr. guess Clawson. I would just, you know, question what I heard earlier about the recycling. We've all been told to not put those things in the recycle bins, and yet people still do that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how many times they have to tell me. You know, fortunately, I've learned that I don't put them in there, but apparently there's enough community folks that are putting them in that's coming up the works, so to speak. So. You, know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't always get him to drink. <clears throat> However, with all the other plastic bags out there, the produce bags, the meat bags, et cetera, will that really make a difference in the equipment? I'm not sure. And our garbage bags and other things. We have so many plastic bags around. Same with litter. We're in Rotary, and we go out and we pick up roadside litter. It's an equal amount of cans, bags, I mean paper bags and plastic. So I don't see that when we're picking up we don't get that much plastic. Um, I just know the volume and I'd use mine. I would dare say that I probably bring home five to one, five of these bags to one of the other plastic bags for produce or meat. I'm gonna create a little thing for you to put all your little plastic bags I already in. do. <laughs> and I already do, I'll Cindy. call them, you bring them I, to I bring them all to right. your house. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. You know, Jerry's here uh, faithfully every Tuesday night, and I appreciate that. And it's great to see uh, more people in the audience here tonight. And, and uh, so Jerry's seen this, but not everybody else has. And so there's four items on the on the uh, the wall here. And even if we don't take any action, this came from our, our council retreat. And uh, I think we did raise the bar tonight just having some conversation. And uh, John used this one earlier today at the... At, 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 a, at a retreat we were at. Thank uh, you, Beck. <laughs> and, and are we honoring the past but not living in the past? I think that's important. And are we building connections with outside partners? I think we did. We've got the county here with us tonight. Thank you. And uh, will this project or action make us proud? Possibly. Uh, so uh, I thank all of you for, for coming and the council uh, for all of you being here tonight. So uh, more to come. Certainly. Okay. And my goal in the last two weeks is signing by Alfred
everybody for coming this evening. Appreciate it. So two things.